name is Steph Coleman, and I've organized this get-together for academics primarily. So there are a few of you from Unitech here, and some people from the community, the business community. Um, at this stage, I'm just going to say thank you for coming, and welcome Eddie Al, who has come here from his home in China. He's actually here until Sunday, and then he flies back out. But he is potentially coming back in September to offer two courses, one in Champion, Lean Six Sigma Champion, and the other one in Lean Six Sigma Green Melt. Eddie has a huge history in Six Sigma. His work has primarily been in China, but he's traveled all over Europe. He's also worked in Australia, New Zealand, and all of Australasia. He brings to you a very varied background. He's worked in manufacturing, in service, in sales. He'll tell you more about that later. My experience of Eddie so far has been that he understands Six Sigma in depth. So you're going to be hearing from a total expert. Now, I know he's very modest, but uh, he will give you some information about what he's done in the past, how he's worked with businesses, and how he has employed Six Sigma with businesses. His first focus, though, will be on what he does with Six Sigma and how he trains in that area. So his work in training in Six Sigma is quite significant because he brings all of that knowledge into his courses. Uh, and he will tell you more about the Six Sigma Lean Six Sigma as opposed to Six Sigma as well. So I'd like to welcome Eddie. And when you get a chance at the very end, we'd like you to have a look at the last two courses listed in your brochure. And I will give you a little bit of information about those, those courses coming up in September. Thank you very much, and welcome, Eddie. Yeah, thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, back there, can you hear me? Yes. Sukesh? Okay, thank you. So I thank you for Beth and also Unitex, especially Sukesh for his great arrangement so that we can be here. And I'm not here to lecture you, but to share my experience and knowledge in Lean Six Sigma with you. So in case you have any questions, please do ask. And in order to encourage you to ask more questions, so I'm going to give out three books. All right, to the ones that have most questions, okay? <laughs> so you can ask any questions like my age, my you know, background, childhood, or how many kids do I have? It counts, okay? <laughs> okay, so Beth, could you please come? Sure. Yeah, how many questions that uh, I'm being asked, okay? <laughs> okay, let's start. So uh, just a bit uh, of my background myself. Actually, I... I was in the manufacturing industry. So how many of you actually from manufacturing? Not too many, but it's tough, right? Okay. Yeah, then I switched to uh, servicing. Uh, actually, it's uh, consulting, okay? So I was consultant for Lean and Six Sigma, and later on, I, I mean financial you know, services, okay? So I, I think it's like getting more challenging when you, you know, switch jobs and industries as well. So I can share with you my experience as well. Okay, so today I'm going to cover a few things. Those critical things about Lean Six Sigma. First of all, what it is. Second of all, why you want to do it. Okay, because we are, must be something that attracts you to do something costly, right? The third thing is where we're going to do it and when, who's going to do it and how we're going to do it. Okay, so those three, uh, a few basic questions that should be answered at the end of this course or seminar. Okay, so, uh, okay, I know a few of you from uh, manufacturing, but even you are from manufacturing industry, but however, you are doing different roles, different functions. Okay, so maybe you are servicing the, uh, you know, the, uh, the manufacturing uh, 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 service as well. So what I'm saying is like, for instance, if I'm a child, Okay, from uh, manufacturing industry, right? So I consider you as a service. Okay, so 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 you come to the right class because here mainly for service. Okay, all right. So please take a few minutes or maybe one minute because time is limited on the Lean Six Sigma expectation and understanding. 
Okay, so what you want to get out of this seminar, okay, and what you think of Lean Six Sigma, so that you can compare against you know what I'm going to deliver to you. Okay, so can I can we have one minute to think about what you want to do during the uh, less than one hour? Okay, and what are your expe expectations are? Okay, and also one more. If you have any questions, okay, I need three volunteers to give us questions or problems so that I can use it as an example, all right, to walk you through your problem or issue. Any problem, life problem, okay? You can apply the Lean Six Sigma tool to your daily life, okay? I apply those tools for my kids uh, to select the, uh, the primary, all right, school, so for instance, okay? And for ladies, you can apply the same tool for your clothing, for instance, all right? Because, you know, I know some, uh, not my wife, okay? My wife maybe has a problem at the end of the year. So many new clothes, but still have the tax, right? <laughs> so that's her problem, okay? So we can apply the same to her problem as well. Okay, any problem you think you can think of. Yes? What I think is like there are questions what, why, where, when, what when you consider New Zealand and New Zealand organization and the size, they are not so big. Like yes. The question that will come is like can we afford it? And if, if we can afford it, can we risk our employees? Can we uh, afford to train them? Mm -hmm. We have very small for, uh, work, uh, workforce, and it, it will be risking our workforce as well as our finance for Six Sigma when we are doing all right. Okay, good question. So I'll, 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 I'll answer your question shortly. But in short, I can get you, I'll give you answers now. It depends, right? I mean, once you 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 pay maybe like for for for, for the future training, right? But at the end, you have savings. So when you have a higher saving than your course, why not, right? So by the end of the course, actually you need to finish a, a project yourself, okay? From that project, actually you can break even already, okay? So that's the reason why it's so attractive, okay? All right, so you guys done? Okay, good. So anyone would like to share problems? Oh, yeah, one, two, yeah? Yeah, uh, regarding the employees. Yes. How to uh, get maximum uh, work or you know maximum uh, output output from the employees. Excellent. Let me write down. So, how to get maximum output? Second, sir, please. Related to that, that's getting buy-in from people who are specialists in the, in the niches like software developers, for example, who have done things a certain way throughout their career and don't want to change the way they do things. Uh, can, you be, uh, can, you, can you repeat your question? <laughs> getting commitment okay. from a diverse team such as specialist software developers who have their standard ways that they prefer to operate based on their industry. Well, there's a big one, but let me try to capture it. Getting the commitment, right? Yeah. Uh, can you repeat commitment on? On, on agreed processes. Uh, on agreed processes. Okay. Last one, yes. How do you measure innovation? Okay, how to measure innovation. Okay, excellent. So I try my best to cover up these three areas, all right, during our seminar. Okay, let's start. What is it? Actually, Lean Six Sigma, actually Six Sigma, originally started from Motorola in 1992, which is a long time ago, right? Uh, but John, uh, John Welch, actually this guy, further developed into uh, worldwide, you know, known methodology. Okay, 
So actually, he committed to Lean Six Sigma, and he also thinks to change GE from one of the great companies to absolutely the greatest company in the world. Okay, he's a big guy, he's still there, all right, but he's retired now. Okay, so GE actually is a, is a big promoter of Six Sigma, okay? And but what is Six Sigma? Okay, the Sigma is actually a Greek word, okay, letter, which tells you how far you are away from the average, okay? And also Six Sigma, that means actually is a problem solving methodology consisting of five phases, five phases. DMAIC or DM, DMADV. Is it hard to remember? That's a good way. So, DM, oops, sorry. So for the first time I learned maybe 20 years ago, it's hard to remember, right? So for D, that's dumb, manager, always increases, increase cost. Okay, easier, right? So what is DME DV? Anyone? Dumb manager always destroy values. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's easy to remember. But as a matter of fact, actually, at Six Sigma, there is actually only 3.4 defects per million opportunities. Okay. So over one million. Okay. That's pretty small. Right. But however, this is not the best. The best is the Japanese. Zero defect. Okay. All right. So how do we explain this? But this one, you can say, for instance, you are, you are ordering a room service for breakfast, all right? So I would like to have uh, my room service at eight, okay? But however, the guy deliver at seven, all right? Which is too early. And another time, he deliver at nine, okay? So it's totally out of your expectation, okay? Would, would that be acceptable? Not really, right? But the hotel manager is telling you, oh, come on, on average, we are delivered at eight, <laughs> right? <laughs> we are doing excellent, right? Seven times, times nine divided by two, that's eight, right? At your expectation, on average, right? Not really, <laughs> you cannot accept. Okay, so that's why we cannot accept average. Okay, you, look, you need to look at the spread, the standard deviation, how far away from your customer's expectation. Okay, very important. Don't talk about average, okay, because your graphers only serve once in a lifetime, right? No average. So that's why we need to reduce our variation in our service, in our products. Okay? Uh, can I have a question, please? Yes. Uh, back to the question gentleman asked about New Zealand. Yes. Um, New Zealand is actually a very unique place. Yes. And it's unique because it is actually the size of the market is actually too small. Yes. To be able actually to take the market, you need to have actually a boutique type of, let's say, um, uh, offerings. Yes. Uh, in our case, it's actually manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Uh, if a customer says, I want, for example, a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this, my answer is actually yes, because I know if I say no, I've lost actually a sale, which is actually a big portion of the market. Yes. So how would I actually go ahead with that variation? I need to create actually the variation to be able actually to combine that variation to kind of get an economy of a scale. So how would I go for that? Very good question. Actually, uh, we need to have the definition of variation. Okay, my definition is like the variance or the variation that amount, I mean, deviate from the average. But you are talking, I guess, I believe it's varieties, right? Different right, different options for your customers, right? So they're different. 
Okay, so yes, if your customers want more options, go for it. Okay, that will be covered in lean section. This is six sigma. Okay, so it's different. All right, so that's the difference between variation and variety. Okay, two different things. Okay, okay, let's go. Okay, so this is an example of you know what's the difference between three sigma and six sigma. It's a big gap. All right, even 93.3 good against 99.99 six percent good. Okay, so but however, when you come to the safety, like if you're flying plane, you want zero defect, right? That's for sure. Okay, so it's a never-ending process. Okay, and here tells you the difference between DMAIC and DMADV. Okay, so normally we'll go down here. Okay, DMAIC. This is for design for six sigma. Okay, two cases that you switch to design for six sigma. One is the process too bad. All right, cannot be fixed. Okay, second of all is a new process. Okay, new process is different than a new product. Okay, because when you develop a new product, actually you already have a process, right? Okay, but for most of my clients, I mean, the, the, the cases that I had, they always say, oh, we have no process. We have no data. Okay, but in fact, you have, maybe it's broken one, but still have for 99.996%, <laughs> okay? But of course, sometimes you have no process at all. Okay, and sometimes it's costly to fix the, pro uh, the, the process. So this is time that you switch to design for six sigma. Okay, so normally for 99%, actually you deal with the uh, existing process. Okay, so that's the difference between DMASE and uh, DMAD. Okay. Okay, lean concept, very important. All right, here I'm not to educate you, but just want you to open your mind. Okay, to listen what I'm going to tell you. Okay, and so that you have more questions okay, coming out. Okay, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm preparing the books for you. Okay, so for the lean concept, there are only five basic concepts. One is the value. Okay, so that means actually if your customer want more options, go for it. Okay, because this is what your customers want. Okay, make them happy so that they can pay you. All right. The second one is the flow, okay? We need to keep things flowing, okay? Anything stop the flow, that's inefficient, okay? For instance, when you have an application, all right? Then you submit your application, so most of the time, actually, we'll put in the basket, right? And wait maybe till a pile so that the guy can handle, okay? So if you see this is happening, that's a waste. Okay, it's not flowing. Okay, so we want things flowing. Okay? The third one is the pool. Okay, that means the flow of the materials. Okay? Actually trigger and control by the next immediate downstream process or customer demand. Okay, otherwise, you have lots of infantry. Right? Oh, I, I, I see some big smiles because they, they knew, right? <laughs> so it, it's happening. Right? So the fourth one, standardization, all right, is a dumb action, but it works. If you cannot find the problem, the root causes, just put anything back to normal. All right, standardize everything. All right, when you have a hard time with your cell, your mobile, there's a button called, you know, set to the original factory setting, right? So that's the standardization, okay? Works every time, but sometimes costly. Okay, the last one, perfection. Okay, that is actually you need to work hard continuously. Okay, today you're number one, but tomorrow you'll be the last. Okay, so that's why you need to work continuously uh, towards the, uh, you know, the best, the excellence. Okay? So those are the five concepts that you're going to use later. Okay? All right, so the next slide here is also important, the eight ways. Okay, when I'm a, well, I'm a consultant, right? When I walk into a factory, 
or office with my eyes closed, I can easily tell you those are your problems. Okay? You have the waiting, you have the defects, you have the inventory, you have the uh, underutilized employee creativity, talent. Okay? So the tricks. Okay? I got 99% right. Okay? So among those, what do you think? Which one is the, the biggest defect or waste or sins in here? Which one? Eight. Sorry? Number eight. Number eight. Amazing. Excellent. You know, people won't say it. Okay? I'll tell you why. Because this one actually stops you from excelling. All right? For instance, how many of you have improvement ideas at home in your company? No, no. I, I say at least three. Three improvement ideas. Can you raise your hand? Okay. Okay, so, okay, thank you. So, not too many, right? So, for the rest, why you don't have three uh, improvement ideas? I mean, what I'm saying is, the, just this, the, 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 the minor one, like for instance, change the coffee brand, so that you can uh, bring up the morale of the uh, our staff, for instance. So, can you give me three ideas? Yes? Okay. All right, my second question. Why didn't you do it? Because of the company? Right? So there's no reward system in the company? Or someone like forcing you not to do it? So those are questions that you can think about at home or at office. Okay, I'm not going to tell you the, the answer, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Possible. Yeah. But on the other hand, maybe, I'm just saying maybe, you are one of the problems. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because you are in, with the company for a long time, so that everything looks normal to you. Right? Okay? So next time when there's a newcomer, I ask him, what do you think about company? Okay? But there's something to tell you, right? So that's the inspiration that you get from the new guys. Okay? Right, for instance, I don't know where the toilet is, for instance. But right, that reduces the productivity. Right? And not good for your health as well. <laughs> <laughs> So if you can put on size, say, you know, toilet or restroom, then actually you can speed up the process, right? make the day easier. Can I interrupt? Yes. I'm sorry, I was supposed to tell you where the toilets are. <laughs> <laughs> go out this door and turn left and go straight down the hall and you'll see it on the left. Through the second door. <laughs> sorry. That's all right. <laughs> that was a quality issue. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. So, the point is, I mean, if it's a good one, actually, you don't need anyone to tell you. What we call the visual management. All right, by looking at the sign, the color, all right, you can automatically give you the way or show you the direction. Okay? So, don't tell me it's a high call to ask someone like that, very costly, to stand next to you and say, tell you where the toilet is, right? By getting a sign, put it up so that people know it and do it automatically. Okay? Good question, thank you. <laughs> All right, so wh wh which one is the second biggest one? Anyone? Three. Sorry? Two. Two. Two, waiting, wow, you guys are great. You picked the right one, then. I think you can do the consulting work. <laughs> are you a consultant? Yes. Wow, excellent. So why, why waiting? Because you see it most of your life, most of your time. Okay, waiting for approval, waiting for uh, QA, okay, waiting for your previous step, right? So lots of waiting. If we are working on something, a project, on reducing the turnaround time, okay? Always looking at the decision box, right? Decision box is waiting for approval, waiting for 
uh, 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 waiting to be handled, right? Waiting to be examined, things like that. Waiting for materials. So those are the areas that you should look into and then reduce the waste of waiting. Okay? All right, so others will be defects, pretty obvious, all right? And the unnecessary transportation, unnecessary motion, that's the human issue, right? Then it's actually start walking around to get the information, okay? So in order to separate the video and the long video added steps, you need to be careful on the definition of value. Okay, so what is the value? It's not determined by you or me. It is determined by your customer. Who is your customer? Not your boss. Okay, the one actually pay, pays your company. All right, your boss only keep the big portion and give you a small portion. Okay. <laughs> Okay, he's the agent. All right, the final customer actually is the one pays your company. Okay, so that's the ultimate one. Of course, sometimes you need to handle the internal customers as well. Like for instance, if you're HR, then you need to fulfill your customer's needs, like from other departments, to recruit more uh, people into your company. So that will be your internal customers. Okay? Hey, before you go, can I ask yes. a quick question? Uh, number two, Yes. You actually mentioned a few examples. What about decision making? Would that come actually on the number two? Because if you are not enabled to make actually uh, be creative, then you are not making actually decision. Therefore, it's actually writing. Therefore, it is a waste. Okay, very good. So you need to go back to the basic. What is the value? Who is your customer? Okay, your customer they don't care about the approval, right? They just want their goods or services. Who cares about approval, right? Approval is only for your manager, right? To have control on the process. If everybody does the right thing, why you need an approval? Everything should be moved slowly, I mean uh, smoothly, right? Right? Yes. So that's why you need to go back and ask yourself what the value is. Okay, so basic question. Okay, did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Good questions. I mean, um, I mean sometimes you have no choice because the law says so. The, so sometimes what? Sometimes you have no choice. Yes. Um, I mean, like for example, the customer might want something, yeah. but if the law says no, because okay. you're working within the law, um, like you're, because you're working with, within um, a legal framework, you yes. can't really move. Yeah. So in that case, what do you do? Okay, very good question. Uh, it's sometimes not up to us, uh, because the regulation, the company says no. But you still can keep your customers happy, right? There's one real case in New Zealand, all right? Anyone from the insurance industry? Anyone? Yes, one, only one? I heard one case from AIG New Zealand, all right, in downtown. All right, they reject, they reject the claim from the customers. But the customer still raised them as 10, because it's from zero to 10. So it's very really happy. Customer, even their claim is being rejected by the company. Unbelievable, right? So that's the service, that's a wow actually you are looking for, right? So the system is fixed, but we are human. Or we can turn around, even we reject our customers' request, but still make them happy, and explain well why it's, not, why it's being rejected, right? Okay? So it's your job. Don't bring the system, okay? You are part of the system, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Any questions? Good questions. Any? Okay, let's move on. So this one tells you actually we have low efficiency. All right, even a big company like ABB is a Sweden company. I'm not sure if you, I think somewhere in here as well. If you go to the web, actually search ABB, efficiency, productivity, actually they only have how many percent do you think? 
For manufacturing, give you a hint, 15%. For business, uh, process transactional, service, 10%. For business process creativity, 5%. Efficiency. So as an ABB big company, what is the efficiency? Can you guess? Sorry? 10. Anyone? Higher? Lower? Anyone? Second beat? Sorry? 20. Anyone higher? 0.025. The actual one, Peter's right. Only 3%. All right? So ask yourself, all right, what is my efficiency? All right, how much time is better added to my customers? Okay, you'll be shocked. Okay, be careful your definition. All right, value is defined by the customers. They don't care your approval. They don't want to be waited for a long time. Okay, don't, they don't want excuses. All right? Okay, fun part. I need 20 volunteers to play the game so that you can apply the very simple five lean concepts in the game. And others can be the observers. Anyone want to do it? Please come down. We are going to play a ball game. Come on. <laughs> okay, 20, 20 people. Take us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, pick one. Thank you. Take one. No, go back to your seat. I'm sorry, madam. <laughs> go back. Take one. Thank you. Show me. Sure. Still a few. Anyone interested? Don't be shy. At the end of the game, you you see yourself so amazing that actually you achieve something beyond your expectation. Anyone? <laughs> oh, take one. Or take a few if you like. Anyone? You can pass. Okay, good. Last one. Yeah. Oh no. Second half. Okay, good. So uh, all to all tickets are sold. Good. Let's go. <laughs> Done? All 20? Okay, so the rules here is Done? All? Good. Okay, the game rule is from 1 to 20. All right? Who's 1? Okay, so it, uh, you can stand up and call the second one. Not, not now, but I'm explaining the rules, okay? Call the second one, and then you throw the ball to him or her. All right? And then pass on to the last 20. Okay? However, if it drops on the floor, you have to do it again. <laughs> That's the quality issue. Pretty obvious, right? Right? So, by doing this game, I give you three chances, okay? You have three rounds so that you can apply the lean principle. What's the lean principle again? What are the five lean principles? Anyone? Don't look at it. <laughs> yes? Value, flow, standardization. Yeah! <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so five. Very simple, right? Easy. But hard to apply, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, so got that? So from 1 to 20, if you drop, then you need to uh, do it again. Yes, but remain where you are. You just, you know, yell out when you pass to the next one. Can you do that? Okay. Okay, not yet. Wow, good catch. But not yet, not yet. Let me have the uh, timer. Okay. So I count three, two, one, start, right? Three, two, one, go! Two. Three. Whoa. Four, 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 Five. Yep. Six. Yeah, five. Seven. Yeah. Five. Yep. Yep. Eight. Oh! oh. 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 
That's life. Be careful. Three seconds. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, no twenty-one. <laughs> Sorry, give me my right glasses. <laughs> okay, so the round one record. So, are you happy with the result? <laughs> no, 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 not, you are not Kiwi. We asked for the pass, right? Okay, so now rule changed, okay? Whatever you like, you can do anything you want. However, still only one rule that actually from 1 to 20. Okay? So please help me to reduce the waste. Okay? You want a few minutes to discuss? Anyone? It's your control, number one. That's your control. Oh, I'm sorry. That's your call. You are our leader. Can we all go down the front and line up? Yes. <laughs> Anything you can think of, okay? And what do you think the five lean principles, okay? The five lean concepts. Why don't we just stand there? So you start your podcast? Not yet, not yet. Until you say you're ready, okay? Hey guys, please help. Okay, you are part of the game. Okay, so anything you can uh, think of. <laughs> yes. Does the ball have to move? It, I don't care. I'm a customer. What I want you to to differ from one to twenty. Put the ball on the table and everyone touch it. You just juggle it once. You can have anything you want. You should put another tree next to one. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still going to go through the hands. But you can't just give wrong material to the customer. Done? Does everyone have to touch it? No. If we assemble with one, two, uh, with one like this and two like this, with all standing in one queue, probably that would be the least time. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not part of you. It's <laughs> quite If I count numbers or steps in the process, though, it would be quicker too. It doesn't mean you're going to get a ball at the end of it. Okay, look, the requirement is to pass the ball from 1 to 20. That's my customer requirement. That's it. Like that, thank you. No, no, no. Not that easy, I'm sorry, man. Okay. So, so the Okay, time's up. Last, last one. Shoulder, shoulder. Can we start now? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one, stop. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> oh, that's 12 minutes. I didn't count that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we are not sleeping. I know. Okay. Okay. Are you happy? No. Why not? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Huh? What? We can shorten the time. How? What did you do? Sorry. What did you do to reduce what kind of waste? Distance. Distance. Where else? I don't hear someone yelling someone, right? So unnecessary motion, you, you removed. You removed the waiting, right? You removed, oh, let me put, uh, put it up so they can see it. So also you remove this one, uh, right? Very important, right? And six, yes, and unnecessary transportation and motion, yeah, motion, right? You eliminate this one. Yeah, right? No defects. Yeah. Amazing, right? Uh, three. Uh, uh, this one, no, yes. That's QA. No, you don't have QA. That's, no, someone, don't get it. Okay, okay. good. <laughs> also, one. Because we just have one ball. Uh, that's the rule of the game. Oh, sorry. You only have one ball. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. We, we no, no, no. no you they don't. have no inventory also. Sorry? We removed four also. We were not like having the ball in our hand and looking for Okay, what do you mean by inventory? Yeah, a ball never stopped in our hand and we were not looking for You only have one? Yes. No inventory? Yes. Alright? So let's be clear on the definition. Alright. So, can you do better? Yes. 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 How? Oh. Making groups. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Automation. Yeah, excellent. Will you try? Any other comments from the observers? Good? Are we good? Okay, we're good. Okay, so shall we do it again? I don't know, you tell me. I'm the customer. If you've got a really tight circle, you can put it here. If you go right here, you'll be able to tighten up the circle. You can tighten it up the circle. You can tighten up the circle. You can tighten up the circle. You can tighten up are you ready guys ready three two one stop oh <laughs> Oh, oh, five seconds. Happy? Yeah. yeah. Can we do better? Yeah. How? What kind of waste? Do you have? What kind of waste? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, hold on a second. What kind of waste? That's the customer requirements, okay? From, <laughs> from 1 to 20, okay? So what else can you do? I mean, what are the ways? Excellent! Still space, right? How do we do it? Oh, she's hot. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Three, two, one, start! Done. Wow. Two seconds! <laughs> Excellent! Okay, thank you. You can go back. See, that's the power of me. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. <laughs>
So you personally observe what lean can bring to you, right? So imagine you have more than 20 processes in your company, right? So the turnaround time will be double, triple, maybe 100 times, right? Because they are not in the same room, right? Not as efficient as you guys, right? To talk, to communicate, right? So if you can create that kind of movement or you know, settings for the company, that would be amazing. You don't need my training, right? <laughs> so simple to, to understand, but not simple to apply. Okay? Five lean principles. What are they again? Excellent. Right? So next time you can do it in one second maybe. Okay? Possible. Okay, any other question before we proceed? I'm sorry? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's another issue. Okay. <laughs> All right. So in here, uh, where we bring Lean and Six Sigma together. Okay, Lean is easy to apply, but the methodology is not that structured. Okay, that means actually you can think of the ways to apply, then you actually can do it without knowing the root causes. Right? But however, Six Sigma actually gives you a robust, structured way to solve your problem. So if you have a simple question, you don't need Six Sigma because actually it's simple enough for you to solve it. However, if you are running into a, a more complicated question, a problem, then you need to do it step by step so that if you're wrong in one step, you can always go back to your previous one to re-exam. Okay, so that's the power of doing step by step problem solving. Okay. Yes? Um, is Lean more to do actually with mental, let's say, <coughs> shift and Six Sigma more to do with uh, tools? If I can say it. Not really. I mean, for two, actually, there's some overlapping. Okay? But however, most likely, you deal with efficiency, lean. For six sigma, you deal with effectiveness. Okay? Questions? You can challenge me. I'm okay. So, the next question you should ask me is what do you mean by efficiency? What do you mean by effectiveness? I mean, if you don't, don't challenge me, I won't ask, I mean, I won't tell you. <laughs> So, by my understanding, efficiency <coughs> is actually the value added input against the total input. Okay? Input means actually maybe resources, okay, maybe manpower, maybe, well, I don't know, maybe machines, right? So you need to get most out of it, then you have a high efficiency, okay? When we talk about effectiveness, that's all about the output. Actual output against the expected output, okay? Okay? But not the best. Because now we are actually working on the surface and stuff. Because already doing the product, right? Because manufacturing industry is working so hard, all right? Because customer asks for lower and lower prices every year, okay? So now we move to surface and stuff. How to improve the productivity of your stuff, for instance. So what do you mean by productivity? This is hardest. That is actually taking one from here. All right, so that's the actual outputs divided by the total inputs. Okay? Profit, for example, is hard because you need to improve the sales, lower cost, right? That's another example. 
It's hard. Yes? Can you have a question? Can you send your example? The example? Yeah. Selling business yes. Yeah. Now, what happens is if you're looking at productivity, yeah. and this emphasis is on consumer, uh, sorry, customer relationship management, which is super efficient. Okay. Right? How can you then mm, come to a happy medium of the two? Because what I'm saying is to keep the customer happy, even yeah. though if they are not buying a shoe, yeah. you, know, you can talk on the phone with them for five hours, but if they don't buy it, Product is still fine because it's a customer that they want to use. That's the customer experience that you're talking about. Yeah. That's my another special specialty. But here is only talk about insect Sigma. But again, you're bringing a good point that actually customer experience is another major topic. All right, when you search Google, when you Google customer experience, I think now it's, I think it's like maybe 100 times more than uh, two or three years ago. Okay, so that's why you need another KPI. Then this one, okay, another KPI, key performance indicator. So this one's only in general, okay. For instance, this one can be revenue generation. I'm uh, uh, sorry, profit. Profit can be the productivity part. So these are guess what? The sales and the cost. Cost actually is the input. Sales is the output, right? So I I want to give you a general equation, right? Okay, got that? This is hard profit. You need to control the cost and also in, improve your sales. Right, there's two ways. Right? Input, cost, sales, output. Same as the customer experience. Okay, so it's another KPI. Okay, let's start. Uh, okay, so what is actually is Lean Six Sigma? It's a customer-centric improvement methodology combining Lean and Six Sigma together so that we can improve efficiency, effectiveness, and productivity in achieving the best customer experience. That's when you talk about, right? And also enterprise excellencies. Okay, so it's my definition on Lean Six Sigma. Of course, when you read other textbooks, there will be different uh, definitions, okay? Okay, so this is the uh, mechanism that you can hold the improvement momentum. That means that you, you are not only doing lean, but also Six Sigma. Design for Six Sigma, at the end you have the process management. Excuse me. Yes? Just allowing you to the previous slide, you said... Um, Which one? Slide number... Uh, it's an approach to Kaizen GV, no, go back one. No, uh, sorry. This one? Yeah. Well, this one. Okay. So, GBBB and EBB, what are those things? Okay, this is Kaizen, GBBB Green Bell, uh, Black Bell. It's a workshop that actually at the back of the uh, pamphlet. Mm -hmm. Okay, shows you how to do the project. Okay, there are different uh, levels of projects. Green Bell is like the, uh, Kaizen is the easiest one, like the one that you just did here. Green Bell is more complicated, more structured so that you know what tools to use in different phases. For so black belts, like cross-functional, like for instance, I want to work out the, uh, improve the profit, for instance, right? I need to work with the uh, sales team and also the operations team, okay? So it's more complicated. Uh, MBB is my MBB is like we can coach the green belt and black belt so that they can do their projects, okay? Good, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, good. Okay, in here it tells you what are the differences between Lean Six Sigma and <coughs> other project management tools like Prince2, PMP, okay, or Scrum or Agile, okay? So indeed, those project management tools is actually here to implement solutions, okay? So on time, on schedule, within budget, right? So those are things that you need to compile when you do a a project management, okay? However, Lean Six Sigma, actually the most critical part is the analysis, right? To analyze the root causes of your problem, okay? For instance, those three problems, issues, how to get maximum output, okay? Here's the actions to improve the outputs. They actually don't tell you the root causes, right? 
So I mean, for us, normally we will instantly think of the actions to improve the problem, right? That's normal. However, if you are trained by Lean Six Sigma, then it's actually you will think of the problem first. What actually the problem is? Where the problem is? What the problem is? What is the extent of the problem? How serious? Okay, so that's the mentality or the training that we offer in the workshop. Okay, we don't take actions. We one step backward, think of the problem, all right, be more specific. Okay, like for instance, how to measure innovation. Okay, this is good. Actually, this is not a problem, right? It's a problem to measure. But beyond measure, we take action, right? So before action, we need to find out what the root causes of being not that innovative, right? So that we can improve. But however, before that, we need to measure what is the best KPI indicator to measure innovation. Like how do we capture data? Okay, so those are problems at front that we never or seldom pay attention to. Okay, what we want, or our boss wants like, Give me the answer, take actions, right? Uh, we step one back, backward, saying what the real problem is. Okay, what is the scope of the problem? Yes? What's the best analysis tool that you use then to complement that? It's going to show you later. But again, we have many tools, like for instance, for define, we have different tools, like Project Charter, we have the uh, uh, process map, we have the, uh, what we call the uh, quick win, okay? We have the uh, stakeholder analysis, we have the, uh, the communication plan, things like that to help you to work on the define. For measure, I'll skip later, right? I'll just explain you now. For measure, we have the data measuring plan, okay? We need to define what KPI should be used, right? For instance, to measure customer experience, right? What are the best KPIs? Right? How do we capture? Who is going to capture? What is the data range that we need to, to, to do it? How to display data? Can it be fit into different distributions? Things like that. Okay? For anal analysis, actually we can do root cause analysis, brainstorming, long traditional one, traditional one, okay? Phi Y, uh, tree diagram, okay? And uh, validate analysis, we can validate the question, I mean the validate root causes, by doing some statistical analysis, okay? And so on and so forth, okay? So many tools behind, okay? Yes? If all of the tools uh, between uh, Six Sigma and Total Quality Management are same, if the principles are almost same, and if our target is same, then why do we need Six Sigma differently? Why can't we just use six, uh, Total Quality Management or Quality Control? Well, because, as I said, Six Sigma gives you a more robust, structured uh, framework so that you can work out your questions. I'll show you later because we, we will do it DMASA. Dumb manager always increase cost, right? DMASA, face by face. Okay, by, by you, when you do Kaizen or TQM, actually you do the whole thing together. Right? If you are good enough, sometimes I don't follow the steps. Because I know the problem so well, I will cut to the, the chain and then do the, the, the actions. Okay? But however, if you are not that familiar with the problem or the, the problem is so complicated, you need to do it step by step. Right? You need to verify the root causes. You need to validate your actions. Right? Sometimes, call, well, too costly. For instance, I need to increase the IT, right? I need to buy more machines, software. But can it be justified? Can you validate it? Right, sometimes not because of the machine, because of the human errors, maybe, right? So that's why we need to validate before we put more money in. Yes? Good? Okay, yeah, sure. Like sure, you can get a book. <laughs> <laughs> yes? And as we asked uh, earlier, that he has different suppliers. So if you have different suppliers, there are different varieties. And different varieties means quality levels of different products are different. It's yeah. age of mod modules, right? You need modules for all the businesses, not just one. So total quality management can cover your suppliers also. Yes. Whereas if you cannot uh, ask your suppliers 
to go for Six Sigma because if you had 10, 10 or 12 uh, suppliers, so what, how would you convince them to go for Six Sigma instead of uh, quality management? Well, first of all, Lean Six Sigma is not the only way. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are many ways to deal with problems. Okay, but this is more robust, structured way so that you can solve your problem easier. Okay? TQMs can do the same thing. But however, when you talk about TQM, you can have different stuff, that, like the free fighting. Okay? You can punch, you can you know, cake, whatever you like. But for DM, for six thing measure is structured. Define, measure, how you define problem, how you measure a problem, how you analyze the problem, how you action, and how to keep the control, hold the gains. Okay? Even it's a, a job shop. Yeah. Because I guess the problem here in New Zealand for manufacturing, sorry. Yeah. Uh, maybe even the service side. Yeah. Um, it's actually like more manufacturing side is more like a job shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think my question is actually then out of let's say all these quality management let's say or management let's say ways to deal with the job shop problems, yeah. which one would be actually the best suited actually for New Zealand conditions? Is it lean? Is it six six Is it actually a combination of the two? Is it TQM or some other lesson? Well, for a small scale, I think lean is more appropriate. Okay, however, even the small company, but you may have a complicated problem, right? So for more complicated problems, you should do a six sigma. Okay? Because it's giving you more statistical support. All right, for your project, for your problem, for your actions. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, you mentioned agile, and that six sigma is, is better than agile. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying those are the project management tools. Okay. Why lean six sigma is so special? Because it's pay attention to the analysis. Okay. Because we don't always analyze the recourses. Right, we take actions. That means you use agile to keep the project in control, time, budget, right? Your progress, right? You have issue law, you have the other things, right? Then they have problems, but you never look at the problem itself, right? True, good, okay. All right. So those are factors that contribute to the success of Lean Six Sigma. Because of time, I just uh, skip this. <coughs> okay, why we do it? Very important. Okay, because it's customer focus, okay? And also, average doesn't tell you anything. Okay, need to be more specific, all right? Individual actions. And also, this is very important, all right? The reason why we want to do it because we want to reduce the cost, all right? So where are those costs coming from? There are four ways, at least. One, prevention, appraisal, that is QA. Internal failure, right? That's rework. External failure, that's the claim, right? After customers buy your product. Which one is the most serious one? Of course, external failure, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right? So you don't want to complain, right? Every day you pick up a phone call, oh, complains again, right? So that's the most, the most serious one. Okay, so for most of the company, they are dealing with this too. The more advanced company, they start to do this and this. All right. If you put more money here, then you have less problem here. Okay. So please ask yourself, where do I put my money in? All right. In here or here? All right. I'm here to help you with this, and also this, right. and reduce this. Okay. Because again, inspection is not what customer wants. They don't care. All right, if you have 100% good, why you want to expect everything? Not necessary, right? Assuming you're good. <laughs> okay? Yes? Uh, what? This one? Oh, that's a function of other. Okay? So, it's a function of everything, like those four factors. Okay? Okay, uh, so from uh, Motorola and GE and Align Signal, those are the successful cases, right? So why you want to do it? Because when you weigh the cost and the, uh, and the savings, actually savings will be hard, much higher. Okay, Toyota actually did it the first time. Actually, what we call Toyota Protection System, actually, America, I mean the United States actually copied from Japan, okay? 
Anyone still remember the golden age in 1980s? Japanese, like, they buy everything. The Nikkei index was 40,000 something, right? But now it's 13,000 or 12,000 something. All right? So by the time they think, wow, Japan's really good. Actually, it's only one company doing good, Toyota. All right? And Toyota actually is still the best seller this month. All right, RAV4, the best seller, Corolla. All right, less maintenance, of course, all right? Best surface, right, in general. So that's why they use lean from 1950 to 2007, the top, okay, from beyond. Okay, very impressive. Okay, where do we do it? Uh, many companies, you know, do lean sigma including Westpac, HSBC, uh, KPMG, Dell, things like that. Those local New Zealand companies, okay? And this is interesting. How you view your process, all right? Normally, as a management or a staff, we normally view this, okay? So for instance, I know John well, so I just use his example, all right? Recruiting, right? So you, this is your process, right? From customer contact you to you fulfill your requirement, right? I guess, right? So he's a recruiting agent, so you can, uh, you know, if you did a job or you did someone, you go to them, I go to him, okay? So this is what you consider jobs done. But indeed it's not. When you view your process in the eyes of your customers, sometimes start from selecting you to maybe a review of the candidate after the probation period, right? For schools, actually, like for university itself, it's from the beginning of the school till the end of school year. What about beyond? Looking for a job. I know Suke is working on it. <laughs> so he's working beyond it. So it's like in the eyes of customers. That means students, okay? So it really depends. Okay, so please go back and take a look at your process. Say, hey, how do our customers view our process? Yes? It's not a big view at the top there. Often the customer only focuses on the element that they're least satisfied with. Uh, your customer needs some service from you or products from you, right? That's what he wants, yeah. right? Like for instance, I'll give you another example. Uh, insurance agent, right? So actually, I work for uh, uh, previously worked for a, a insurance company, life insurance company. He, so we improved uh, the process, uh, from, submission process the from submission of the application to the issue of the policy. Of the policy. Okay. Very good. Okay. We Very good. Job. We did a right. great from job. Over, right. from uh, over more than two weeks, uh, more than two weeks one day. to one day. Good. Good. Do you think so? Do you think so? I felt. I felt. I felt good. But when you look at the process, when actually, at the process when actually, acquire when customer a product, acquire a product. All right, a policy. All right, a policy. They will contact who? The agent. The agent will take what? Two the agent will take what? Two or three right. weeks. Right? And then to close the deal. And then to close That's the deal. The That's the quickest. Right? I'm not sure right? you have the same experience. I'm not sure you have the same experience. And then when they, when and the, then when they, company when the, the policy, life company issued a policy, the say, okay, actually the agent said, okay, area. I am not I'm going, going to that area. Uh, I'm going to uh, Hamilton, I'm not going to North Shore. Maybe account. next week I'll go to North Shore and pick up the policy and then so deliver to our customer. One week so that's waiting. another one week waiting. Right? So when you look at the eyes from the eyes of the customers, actually the insurance issuing policy actually is not one but day, um, one month, but um, one month. Right, that's killing you. Right, that's killing oh, you. I need mean, the customer. Of course. But you feel so good. Oh, I did but good job. So good. Oh, I did good job from two yes. weeks to one day. You don't look at the yes, but you don't look at the whole process. Right. Right. Got that? Got that? Yeah. So you need to look at. The, yeah. So you need to look at the, from the eyes of your customer. Yes. yes. That the customer sees that the business doesn't, is that if the business realised realise the customer was gaining greater value, they could charge more. Half of them. Possible. And follow your question. And follow your question, actually, your suggestion. May I ask, 
How often? Do you talk to your customers. Do you talk to your customers? Very good. <laughs> Very good. Other companies. But not at other companies. Right? Right? So how do you capture customers' so How do you capture customers' requirements? Well, I leave it to you. Okay? There are many ways, okay? <laughs> okay. So in our champion course, actually we teach you how to select the right projects for your company by doing step by step approach. Alright? I'm not going to explain here. But however, you can do it a smart way or easier way. Then it's actually you pick whatever is broken. Right? Or you can see where our customers complain the most. Right? That would be your main issue. Uh, your starting point. Okay? When do we do it? The right time is new management, you know, at least I have two two to three years, right? New blood, okay, someone is promoting, okay? Or angry customers stop, you know, locking on your door. Okay? And at that time, I think I like about to retire, okay? <laughs> and uh, process in transit. That is actually it's not stable. Right? That means actually when you capture data, actually it's shifting all the time. There's no point to do a project. Who you do it? Actually, all in your, organization, in your organization should do it. However, you need to have some pilot projects as well. Okay, that means actually you need to start with the black belt or green belt or even a Kaizen. Okay, process owner, that means actually is the, the, the department head or the, uh, the one responsible for the process. Okay, the, the, like the sales process or operations process, okay? MBB is the coach, actually coach the project managers to do their job. Champion actually is the one that, uh, the top management that actually control, uh, not actually doing the project, but monitor the projects, okay? And those are the criteria that for a good candidate to be in the pilot, okay? So 10 points. But for myself, I think the one with open mind and also positive attitude can do the job. All right? If you do not want to change, then it's hard time to change you, right? First, and then change the organization. If you have an open mind, then actually we have a less, you know, um, easier job. Okay? How do we do it? Okay, so again, as I said, there are different courses, awareness, Workshops, uh, Kaizen, Green Belt, Black Belt, Champion, and you have the certification as well. And here we offer the, the Green Belt and, and Champion in the back of the pamphlet, so I, I don't uh, cover that too much. And here, when we do a project, actually, we need a project manager here, okay, Green, green Belt, Black Belt, project manager, and then we have team members from the process, and also subject matter experts. That means actually the person knows the process well. Actually, if it's not, he's responsible uh, to do the project. And we have the uh, process owner, that means the uh, department head, and also the one in charge of the money, incentive, and other things, right? And the direction of the, the company and direction of your, 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 your project. And here, DMEIC, see, we have different objectives for different phases. For the five phase, actually, we need to understand what customers wanted from us, all right? We are not going to please all customers at the beginning, okay? By doing 80-20 rules, actually we can select some target customers to be on your radar, okay? And then we apply different tools that I mentioned to you. <coughs> measure, okay? We measure the KPI, we find the best KPI, okay? For your project, describe the KPIs, okay? We update the project proposal. And then we analyze, this is very important, we analyze the root causes, okay? Sometimes we, this step actually escape, uh, skip, all right, because of timing, okay? So this is actually a very important step, okay? And then improvement, and then hold the gains. That means actually, uh, I'm not sure if you have the experience that actually we improve something, but after one or two months, actually, it goes back to the original. Okay, so that's why we have the control phase to hold the gains, okay? And of course we have different you know, tools for that. Uh, how much does it cost you? Okay, program committee, that means actually you need to form in, in, in inside your company, you need to uh, go through the workshops, uh, project facilitation, because even you go through 
the training, actually you need someone to coach you, right? Like the one that I, that my role to facilitate your game, uh, to give you some guidelines. Because you are the expert in your field. What you need is the inspiration and the tools to assist you to do your job. Okay, like the one that I always mentioned, how do you do it? According to five principles, right? Easy to be understood, but not easy to apply. And again, why you want to do it, those are the costs, that's the savings. That means actually you weight the cost against the savings that you have. All right, normally actually you can recover everything at the end of the project. So that's why you need to select a project wisely. Okay, we are not doing anything, you know, not customer wants. You want doing something actually customer want the most. Okay, and you pay you handsomely if you can do it better, do a better job. Okay, and available time slot actually is at the back of your uh, bullet. Okay, and that will be the end of my presentation. I know it's a, a bit rushed at the end, so I hope you enjoy the seminar. Any questions? Yes. Well, um, usually, actually, the you know I understand that there is actually the time to do the lean or, or lean combination. Yeah. But the first thing that you would actually face is actually the um, resistance to change. Correct. How do you break those uh, that odds? Okay. Very important. When you do a project or do some changes, actually you need to have the change management tool, right? Well, if you have a rule block, you move around or you go for it, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on the situation. That's the two ways they can do it. Okay, that's why we need a champion. Uh, the champion is like the, the top guy to oversee your project, to monitor the project. And then you, as a project manager, to report problems, rule blocks to the champion, okay? and. For your information, actually, in the champion workshop, we teach you how to coach, how to supervise the project manager, like how to challenge him on the deliverables. All right? So you want to, uh, good, do a project. But the point is, the guy, the boss, he doesn't know how to you know, monitor or to challenge the guy, the project manager. But for champion course, actually, we show you the skills, how to do it, how to monitor it, how to control it, how to give reward, incentives to your project manager. Okay. So I was working for a company and I saw a lean fall flat on its face and it was exactly for that reason that it didn't have the champion in place. Therefore, basically the employees didn't come on board because they were selling the idea of the company. So I'll just back you up on that because I've seen that. And for me, I could, on the background, I could see it before that and it would improve the system. Greatly, but yes. because he was so champion, yeah, I think it's really important for my... Right, I agree with you. Actually, you can start small. But you don't need to take my course. I mean, you already, you, you already took it, right? You can apply the five principles at home and work. Right? It can help you a lot as well. Right? What are the five principles? I'm sorry? <laughs> Yeah, great. What is C Sigma? What's not a Problem solving methodology with five phases. The MEIC, the manager, always increase cost, right? Um, what are the uh, eight ways? Last one? Yes. Okay. So you got it. Excellent. Very really good. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Any other questions? Why not just three signals? I'm sorry? Why not just three signals? Well, I show you again. Six sigma. Actually, it's not enough, but you mentioned three sigma. Let me show you the comparison. Oh, here. Okay. So, actually, data from, uh, I think it's from the United States, okay? But here's 200,000 wrong drug prescriptions per year. That's what you want. Or 68 wrong prescriptions per year. 
it's your choice. Or zero defect. Okay? Yes? Yeah, what I think is it, it, it depends more on the market what you choose. If like it, uh, Toyota is number one, like it has the best quality in automobiles, right? It's, as you said, it's for uh, top ranker. But when you compare it with Suzuki in some mm -hmm. markets, it doesn't, uh, does it use Six Sigma? Yeah. It, it uses Six Sigma. Uh, like no, I'm not aware. So, but it beats Toyota with like big, big margins. In yeah. some markets. Doesn't it depend more on the market uh, rather than Agree, market? agree. So Lean Sigma again is not the only methodology that you should apply. Should be one of your weapons. Alright? For the uh, So we can choose the tools from Six Sigma. Yes. And in fact the business. Yes. It, it is not necessary to use the Six Sigma. It depends, as I said. Yes. If you are good enough, if you ma can manage the tools, you can apply anywhere. <laughs> thank you, okay. boy. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, yeah. That was very, very helpful. Thank you yeah. very much for that overview of Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma. I appreciate very much the opportunity to hear okay. that. And I'd like to again thank Unitech, uh, Sukesh Kumar, Kumar Karaman in the back, and Julie as well. Julie Stevens, thank you very much, Julie. She's organized this uh, from day one and it's been extremely helpful. Thank you, Unitech as well, all the Unitech people who are here. We love your support. I would like to uh, just give the prizes to, is that all right with you? I've, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I've done the count, <laughs> okay? So you receive one, thank you. You receive one, there you are. And Luigi, you receive one. <laughs> we counted, I did count. So it was uh, like five, four, and three. <laughs> Here you go. Sorry, right. guys, we're going to give you a lot of chance. Probably the people who are most dissatisfied in the presentation. Oh, yeah. Before you go, I'd just like to mention to you that in the back of your uh, documentation, there are two courses that are given online. Uh, there's a course on Six Sigma Lean. If you'd like to uh, take advantage of a 15% discount on those courses, it's available to you for three days as workshop members. If you would like to register and contact me, all the information is on those sheets and the website is there as well for you to register, catalystcollective.co.nz. The price that's on the website now is the price with a 15% discount for you. Uh, and you're the only people seeing that right now, so go for it. You'll be back in September, and I think this is a good start for you getting an understanding of how valuable this time is. Thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate you coming, and it's been very exciting. I'd like to hand this over to Sukesh to say a few words to you. I'll just take 45 seconds. I just wanted to thank everybody. just want to get a good feel for who's attending today. How many businesses are here today? Quick show of hands. And how many students are here today? Great. And I'm just going to assume everyone else is from UNITE. So the, so the approach we're to do, the approach we're taking here is to bring together businesses, students, and UNITE in a space that ideally sometime in the near future is going to result in a student-involved project to help new businesses to start your thinking or start your project going in your own business environment. You gain as a business because you get some value out of it, it's all about value. Students gain because they get some experience in business experience in applied sense, uh, applying their knowledge as well as maybe get some business experience as a result of that. We achieve our objectives of uh, creating an environment for our students to get some applied learning. So watch that space, this is early days. What we focus on is bringing the best of minds around, uh, in and around New Zealand to where we can have the opportunity. Bring them here, create the opportunity. So, so keep that channel open as you leave. If you haven't left your contact details with, with Julie uh, back there, Julie is our business engagement manager at the Department of Management and Marketing, uh, and, and, and Eddie and us, I think, I think we, we connected at some point last year. Beth runs a business called Catalyst, and again, she's looking to grow her business. So it's, it is about helping you grow your business. We're looking to work with beneficiaries uh, of this process, you as businesses, students, and, and we get some kudos as well for making sure that Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Watch that space. Uh, look up for more workshops that are relevant to you coming. 
but more importantly, connect dots yourself. So in about six months or so, when you come to the next one, uh, hopefully the agenda is, hey, which students want to connect with which business, and which staff member can facilitate that, that, that process to happen. So there's an ongoing conversation with you. So there, I, I look around the room, I see a few members of the, uh, from the Department of Management Marketing. Uh, as you leave, uh, see if you want to have a chat with them as well. You've got Jeff Mary there, Peter, Matthew, looking handsome with that camera. <laughs> over here. I see Nick over there as well, Nick Hans. So anyone else you know? Mary Lim, Daniel, and obviously Juicy. So thank you all. Uh, are you happy for me to yes. say good night? Good night. <laughs> <laughs>